I want to welcome you people, uh, people from all over the world to the online church, the Back to Basics Ministries online church where Jesus Christ is Lord. Hey, he is on the throne. He is not abdicated. He's not given up. He is still on the throne. And so we welcome you. We bless God. We thank God. We give God the praise. There is no other God but the Lord God Almighty. And so we welcome you. Praise God. We welcome you. I um, thank God for you, for those who are live with us today and online live with us, and for those who are watching or listening to the recording. Praise God. God's got a message for you today. And we just thank God. We bless God. We worship him. We worship him. Let's worship God. Let's worship God today. Lift up your hands wherever you are, all over the place, all over your home all over the nation, all over the nations. In Kenya, lift up your hands. Elijah, lift up your hands. Jacko, lift up your hands. All of our friends in Jamaica, lift up your hands. In Sweden, lift up your hands. In Europe, in Asia, all over the place, lift up your hands. We worship God. Give God the praise. Lift up holy hands unto God. Tell God you love him. You worship him. Oh God, I love you and I bless you and honor you and praise you, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord God. I lift up holy hands unto you, Lord. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for you are worthy to be praised. Worthy is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. There is no other Savior but you. Only you can save us. Only you can deliver us. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Come on and worship him. Ladies and gentlemen, worship God. Practice worshiping God. Learn how to worship God. Give him the glory and the honor. Tell him how much you love him. Thank him for his mighty works. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do. We praise you, Father. We affirm our faith in you. We put our trust in you, Lord God. There is none other like you, Lord God. We put our trust in you, God. We trust you, Lord. Oh, God, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity, all unrighteousness. Oh, God, create in us clean hearts. Renew a right spirit within us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you. Come on and worship him, ladies and gentlemen. Worship God. Worship him in the sanctuary. Worship him in your home. Worship him in your bedroom. Worship him in your bathroom. Worship him in your vehicle. Worship him uh, as you walk. Worship him. Worship him for he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. We worship the mighty God. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you. We sanctify ourselves unto you, Lord God. We sanctify ourselves unto you, <clears throat> and we worship you. We will not worship any other God but you. You are the living God. You are the Father and God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we praise you. Come on, those of you joining us today, worship God. Worship him in the sanctuary. Learn how to worship him. Learn how to tell him that you love him. He inhabits the praises of his people. God loves it when you tell him that you love him. He inhabits the praises of his people. Don't be afraid. Worship him. Worship him all the day long. The word says uh, that we're to worship him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Is the name of the Lord to be praised. And so we praise you, Father. We worship you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God. We are not Lord, ashamed Gaffney. of the Lord our God. We're not ashamed to worship God. If you're just joining us, just worship the Lord where you are. Lift up your hands where you are and begin to worship God. For he is worthy to be praised. You'll discover that God does amazing things when you worship him. 
Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give God the praise. Take your mind off everything but God. Put your mind on God. Let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Don't let anything keep you from worshiping God today. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to your problems is worshiping God through Jesus Christ. The answer to your problems, our God will supply all of our needs. Let's worship him. Let's tell him we thank him. Let's tell him we trust him. Let, us, let, let God know that you trust him. No matter what you're going through today, let God know that you trust him. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm not ashamed of you, Lord God. I'm not ashamed of you, Lord God. And so we worship you. All over the world, we worship you. In Africa, we worship you. In Asia, we worship you. In Europe, we worship you. In North and South America, Central America, we worship you. In the Caribbean, we worship you. In the Mideast, we worship you. You are the living God. You are the living God. Take your mind off yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Take your mind off self and worship God. We take our minds off self, God. Forgive us of our sins, God. We humble ourselves before you, Lord God. We come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus that we can praise you, Lord God. Oh, Father, pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Heal the people as they worship you, Lord God. Send healing, Lord God. Stretch forth your mighty hand, Lord God, and heal the people. Heal the land, God. Heal the land, God. Heal the land. Heal your people. Many are afflicted, Lord God. Many are afraid. Many are confused. Heal them, Lord God, as we turn to you, God, as we fix our hearts on you, Lord God, as we set our affections on you, God. Heal us, God. We receive healing. We worship you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We exalt you. We adore you. You are the mighty God. There is none like you. Lord, I thank you. Your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. Mm -hmm. Help your people to worship you today. Holy Spirit, help us to worship God today. Greater are you in us than he that's in the world. Praise God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that even as we pray, even as we worship God, you help our infirmities. For it is written, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit makes groans and utterances that cannot be articulated. And he who searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, get into this worship. Let your soul worship God. Worship God with your spirit, with your heart. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't let God pass you by. Join in the worship. Give God the praise. Thank him. Open up your mouth and thank him. Lift up your hand and thank him. Praise him. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in your car. Praise him wherever you are. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this moment pass you by. Get into the praise. Offer God the, the sacrifice of praise. Bring the sacrifice of praise into the Lord. You know you can't solve your problems. You know you can't solve your problems. Your problems are beating you up. But God is the answer. Worship him. Worship him and learn how to wait on the Lord. Oh, God, I come before you on behalf of the people today. In the name of Jesus. And I acknowledge that you are God. There is none other like you. And so we lift up holy hands unto you, Father. We worship you. We're not ashamed. We're not ashamed to worship you. We are not ashamed to worship you, God. We bless you and praise you and thank you. We welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. The Back to Basics online church where we are 
in worship. We're worshiping God. Lift up your hands wherever you are and worship God. Lift up your hands unto the Lord wherever you are. It might be something new for you to lift up your hands unto the Lord. But lift up your hands. Don't be ashamed. Lift up your hands. Say, I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. I cast every burden unto you, Lord God. I cast every burden unto you, Lord God. For, Lord God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Lord God, somebody's sick today. Somebody's afflicted today. They don't know their way out. They can't see their way out this, of this situation. Lord, you are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. We lift up holy hands to you, Jehovah Rapha. Stretch forth your hands upon the people and heal, Lord God. Break every yoke, Lord. Let your anointing break every yoke, Lord God. Let every... Let your anointing break every yoke. Lord God, somebody is in need, Lord God. Somebody's in need. Somebody needs a job. Somebody uh, has lost their home. Somebody's homeless. They don't know where to turn. But, Lord, I suggest that they turn to you, and we pray for them, God. Lift up. We lift you up, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God. You are exalted above the whole earth. There is nothing impossible for you, Lord. So we pray for those in need today. We pray to you, Jehovah Jireh, the God who supplies all of our needs, the God who gives more than enough. Touch your people, God. Spread, spread your hands upon them, Lord God. Oh, God, pour out your spirit upon them. Pour out your anointing. God, somebody's praying for family members. Somebody's praying for loved ones. Somebody's praying for someone who's sick. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're the healer, God. You said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And so we get into this anointing, God. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your anointing, your presence upon us. Oh, God, I thank you that your hands are mighty upon your people today. And we give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Teach your people how to wait on you, Lord God. We wait on you, Lord God. We wait on you, Lord God. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, all over this nation and all over these nations, there are problems, God. People are dying. People are dying from the coronavirus. Numbers are going up. People don't know what to do. The government doesn't know what to do. The scientists don't know what to do. People are confused, but you know what to do, Lord God, hallelujah, and we put our trust in you. We are not afraid. We're not afraid, Florence Gaffney. We're not afraid, uh, Melanie. We're not afraid, Jackie. We're not afraid, Ryan. We are not afraid because we know in whom we have believed. We praise you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God. Oh, God, pour out your spirit upon the people. We pray for the people. We pray for this, these, this nation, the United States of America. We pray for the nations. We pray for Kenya. We pray for people in China. We pray for people in Russia, all over the globe, God. People are hurting. People are dying, Lord God. We pray for the people in Brazil. We pray for the people in Mexico, Italy, France, Spain. Lord God, where people uh, don't know what to do, God, but uh, God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. You said, call unto me, and I will answer you. I will show you great things which you know not. That's Jeremiah 33, 3. You said, call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Lord, we call unto you. Oh, God, on behalf of the nations, on behalf of this nation, on behalf of the United States, on behalf of every household, on behalf of the church, on behalf of every state, on behalf of the local government, we call unto you, Lord God. Stretch forth your mighty hand. Stretch forth your mighty hand. 
Oh, God, I thank you. You are God all by yourself. You are still on the throne. You have not abdicated. You have not uh, run uh, from your responsibilities. You promise never to leave us nor forsake us. And we take you at your word. You said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And I shall, you shall find rest unto your soul. Lord, we come to you. We're not ashamed of you, Lord Jesus. We're not ashamed. There's nobody else who can heal us. There's nobody else who can heal this nation. There's nobody else who can stop this virus. There's nobody else who can deliver this nation. There's no one else who can turn this nation around. Lord, the president doesn't know what to do, Lord God. The leader don't know what to do. The scientists are baffled. The, the, the uh, journalists are confused. Lord, we call upon you. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty are you. Get into this prayer and praise and worship, ladies and gentlemen. We, we know that you have the answer, God. You have, God, the people in Kenya have problems. People in Nigeria, people on the Ivory Coast, people in Europe, God, have problems. People in the Caribbean, Jamaica, they have problems. They're facing the same uh, uh, worldwide pandemic. Oh, God, but you have the answer. You have the cure. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek Amen. my face and turn from their wicked ways, you said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will Amen. heal their Amen. land. Lord, a few of your people are assembled today here at the Back to Basics online church. Lord, we call upon you. Lord, we humble ourselves. We pray. We seek your face, Lord God. Oh, God, hear our prayers, God. Hear our prayer. We turn from our wicked ways. We have sinned against you, Lord. We are in this condition in this nation because of our sins. We are in this condition in our households because of our sins. We are in this condition in this government because of our sins. We are in this condition in the churches because of our sins. We have sinned against you, Lord God. We acknowledge our sins. We do not point the finger. We do not blame the others. We have sinned against you. We have not obeyed you, Lord God. Have mercy on us, God. I plead with you, Lord God, that you have mercy on us. We worship you, Lord God. We come boldly to the throne of grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, asking forgiveness, Father. Asking for healing, God. Bring healing to the land. Bring healing to the land. Bring deliverance to the land. Bring deliverance. Oh, God, you said in your word in Psalm 91, no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. You said no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Oh, God, we are surrounded by a plague. We are surrounded by a plague in America and in the nations. Lord, the government doesn't know what to do. The scientists don't know what to do. The pharmacists don't know what to do. Lord God, but you have the answer. You are the cure. No sickness shall dwell in your midst, Lord God. No problem is too hard for you, Lord God. And so we humble ourselves before you. We worship you. We pray unto you. We call upon your mighty name, God. We come to you in the name of Jesus. We acknowledge our sins and transgressions. It is because of your mercies, Lord, that we are not consumed. Forgive us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Father, we pray. Forgive us, Father. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for any sin that I caused to others to sin, God. Oh, God, create in us clean hearts. Create in us clean hearts. We acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord of our lives. He is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus Christ is the way. And so we come boldly to the throne of grace, Lord, that we might obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need, we come to you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We come to you. 
Those of you just joining us, we're praying, we're praying, we're worshiping God in the sanctuary. We're worshiping God. We believe God will hear our prayers. We believe God will end this plague. We believe God will deliver this nation. We believe God will deliver the nations. We believe God to save souls. We believe God to hear our prayer. Oh God, we have sinned against you. We are in this condition because of our sins. This nation is in this condition because we have sinned against against you. Our fathers sinned against you. Our leaders sinned against you. We're not pointing any fingers. We're not pointing the blame. We have sinned. Your word says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we come asking that you help us, God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help the people, Lord God. Help the people, Lord God. We don't know what to do, God. We come to you, God. We seek your face, God. The government doesn't have the answer, God. Food stamps is not the answer. Blocks of cheese are not the answer. Bottles of milk are not the answer. Uh, Grains of corn are not the answer. God, many people are starving. Many are hungry. Many have lost their jobs. Many jobs have shut down. Many jobs cannot go on. Oh, God, forgive us. Oh, God, many people uh, have disobeyed you, Lord God. Many people continue to breathe on one another in invading other people's private space. Forgive us, Father. Lord God, stop this plague, God. Stop this plague. And God... We've com- we commit ourselves unto you. Deliver us from our sins. Deliver us from our sins. Help us to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, God, you said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show yourself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards you. God, you're just looking to bless somebody. You're just looking to bless. Your eyes are running, looking to bless somebody. Oh, God, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's Florence Gaffney, Lord. It's Melanie Bias, Lord God. Ryan Trugler, we're standing in the need of prayer. Lord, while on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. Lord, the president needs you. The vice president needs you. The leaders need you. We're in this condition, God, because of our sins, our our continuous sins, our our perpetual sins. We have sinned against you. This nation has sinned against you for a long time, Lord God. For hundreds of years we have sinned against you and continued in sin. We have kicked you out of every aspect of nearly every aspect of our lives as though we don't want you around. But, oh, God, we need you. Only you can deliver us. Only you can deliver us, Lord God. Only you can deliver us. And so, Father, I cry out to you on the behalf of the people. Not ashamed to cry out on behalf of all the people. Have mercy on us, Lord God. In your wrath, remember mercy. In your wrath, remember mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord God. We cry unto you. Lord God, you are the just God. You are the mighty God. You are the God of mercy. Stretch forth your mighty hand, God. Oh, God, cover us with the blood of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Wash us in the pure water of your word. Help the people to turn again to you, Lord God. Help us to turn again to the Lord God. For we have strayed against you and from you. All we like sheep have gone astray, but Lord, return us, I pray, to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Return us, I pray, to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Lord, you are our shepherd. We shall not want. Make us to lie down in green pastures, Lord. Lead us beside the still waters. Restore our soul. Gather your people unto you, Lord God. Gather your people unto you, Lord, like a a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. O God, you say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the um, Almighty. Lord God, gather us as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Under the shelter of your wings, God, cover us with your feathers, Lord God. Minister to us. Bring healing to our souls. God, we repent of our sins. We repent of our sins. Oh, God, as we celebrate the 4th of July, we are not free as long as there's sin in the nation. We are not free as long as there's sin in the nation. We ask that you forgive us as a nation for sinning against you. We ask that you forgive us as individuals 
for sinning against you. We praise you and we bless you and we honor you, Father. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you are the prayer answering God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. And we receive healing, Father. We receive healing for the nations. We receive healing for the nation. We receive healing for the government. We receive healing for the people. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that you have not turned your back against us, God. We thank you that you have not cut us off, Lord God. Oh, Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. We are not ashamed of you, Lord God. We call on you, Lord God. We return to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. We return to you, Lord God. We return to you. Cause your people to return to you, Lord God. Cause your people to repent of their sins and to return to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we bless you. And we praise you, Father. We praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence, Holy Spirit. Let us not grieve you, Holy Spirit. Lord God, I thank you that you're touching somebody's body right now. You're healing somebody right now. Hallelujah. Stretch forth your mighty hand to heal, Lord God. Break every yoke, God. Break every yoke, God. Break every yoke. Thank you that you're restoring somebody's job, God. Somebody's getting a job. We thank you for providing for them. We thank you that you're restoring households, Lord God. Thank you that you're restoring marriages, Lord God. Thank you that you're restoring your people. Lord, you are the restorer. You are the restorer of the breach, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for all of us, for the whole world, that whosoever believes in you shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, that you so love the world. Thank you that you are no respecter of persons. We come boldly to you, Lord God. We come boldly to you, Lord God. We honor you. We worship you. We thank you. We bless you. We give you our total undivided attention, God. We cry unto you. Only you can help us. Only you can save us. Only you can save this nation. Only you can save the nations. Lord God, we thank you. Stretch with your hand behind, beyond this nation and touch the nations, God. Oh, God, cause the people to return to you. Cause the people to call upon you and be saved. Oh, God, bind the enemy, Lord. Rebuke the devourer, God. Rebuke the devourer, God. Bind every power, every principality, all ruler spirits and spirits of wickedness in heavenly places, Lord God. And God, pour out your anointing. Pour out your anointing. Break every yoke, God. Break every yoke, Lord. Cause men and women to run to you, Lord, and say, what must I do to be saved? Help them to confess with their mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in their heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and they shall be saved. Thank you, Father. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice Amen. and be glad in it. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for that prayer. Just felt the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me, ladies and gentlemen, to pray that prayer and that prayer of praise and worship and that yoke-breaking prayer. God is healing. God is still moving. He's moving constantly throughout the whole world. He's moving. He's moving in your house. He's moving on your street. He's moving in your community. He's moving in this nation, and he's not going to stop with this nation. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. God, in the name of Jesus, we bind every lying spirit. We bind every false prophecy. We bind every demonic spirit. We bind every uh, demon that Satan has assigned against this world. We bind every territorial spirit. Oh, God, the earth is yours, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. And we renew our trust in you, Lord God. We renew our faith in you. Help us to wait on you. Help us to wait on you, Lord God. Help us to wait on you. Help us to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. 
He shall strengthen our heart. Thank God. Praise God. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. I felt the anointing, ladies and gentlemen. The anointing breaks the yoke. I felt the anointing. And God, God's anointing said, pray, 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 pray for the people. Pray for the people. Pray Amen. for the people. The Lord said in his word, and I sought for a man among them who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge, but I could find none. Praise God, Lord, I stand in the gap. These stand with me, Lord, in the gap, Lord God, that you'll make up a hedge around this nation. Make up a hedge around these communities. Make up a hedge around the nations. Make up a hedge around the church, God. Make up a hedge around our government. Open the eyes of the people, Lord God. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see Jesus. Open our hearts that we may worship you, Lord God. Create us clean hearts, Lord. Renew a right spirit within us. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Back in the old day, back in the old day, Jackie, somebody would break out at this time with a song. I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. You remember that, Melanie? There is something about serving the Lord. Makes me feel good. David Carter in Dubai. They'd start singing when you were in Louisiana. You remember David in Louisiana? I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. There is something about serving the Lord that makes me feel good. And, and when David, when a hurricane, the hurricane came and you all had to move out of Louisiana, David, you went to McKinney, Texas, and then you heard somebody say, I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. There is something about serving Jesus. Make me feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't believe I've been redeemed. Follow me down to Jordan Stream. There is something about serving the Lord that makes me feel good. Oh, I feel good. Ryan, when you, if your wife say, what's the matter with you, Ryan? You just say, I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. There is something about serving the Lord that makes me feel good. When your neighbor gets diagnosed with, with uh, coronavirus, your neighbor and coronavirus is trying to knock on your door, lift up your hands to Jesus and say, I feel good, good, good. I feel good down in my soul. There is something about serving the Lord that makes me feel good. If they say, oh, you crazy, you crazy, you crazy, say, that's all right. Say, don't you feel good, good, good. Don't you feel good down in your soul. There is something about serving the Lord that makes you feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Back to Basics online church. Jesus has got this. Jesus got this. He's got the answer. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Praise God. He will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. I've got a short word. I'm going to shorten the word today. I'm going to shorten the word. But let's ask David Carter from Dubai, all the way in Dubai, come and give us a testimony. Amen. Um, good morning, church. Good morning, um, good morning Pastor Carter. Um, what a powerful hymn. Um, I was rejoicing. <laughs> I was on you, but I was rejoicing with you. I, I definitely feel good down in my soul. Um, I just thank God for his glory, his presence um, in the midst of everything. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world, but I was sharing other, um, the other day with what I do that in the midst of everything, God is moving. And what you had mentioned, even in the prayer, God is moving. And that's one of the things I was sharing with the group that, you know, we can't miss that. We can't, we can't, 
We can't miss the move of God. God is still moving. God is still healing. God is still saving people in the midst of this pandemic. So, in this, in this all, it is good to see God's glory, his grace in the midst of, 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 of a world that's look like it's falling apart. But God is still on the throne. He's still sovereign. And we're going to still continue, continue to give him the praise and the glory. I'm seeing people getting jobs. I'm seeing people getting healed. And, oh, and that's why I praise God for each and every day. I, I see the goodness of God. Um, so and I, and I rejoice, you know, I rejoice in the testimony of others. Um, God is doing amazing work in, in my family, my life. You know, um, for the summer, we're going to be back home next week. <laughs> so it's going to be a wonderful thing, you know. So, but um, God is just awesome. We, we're Praise doing God. this season. Praise God. Hallelujah. David Carter and Nyamka and their daughter in Dubai. They're going to be home next week. They're going on, coming on furlough. Praise God. And David, when you come, it's, it's much different. It's much different these days. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. And, and when you get around the people, uh, make sure you wear your mask. And they're practicing social distancing even in Texas. And so it's going to be much Amen. different. But thank God that you all are getting a furlough, a time of rest. And uh, pray to Amen. God to bless you, bless you going out and coming in. And you keep on letting Amen. the Lord use you. Hallelujah. That's testimony Amen. from David, uh, Brother David in Dubai, Minister David, uh, Pastor David in Dubai as they spread the word of God in the nation of Dubai. Praise God. And God is God is the answer. Jesus has this. Jesus is the answer. David's hearing, seeing testimony, seeing the Lord move, and we don't want to miss this move of God. We don't want to miss this move of God. You may, say, you may say, well, things are looking so bad. God is not moving. He's still. Why is he so quiet? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad you asked those questions. Turn with me to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, as some of you say. Habakkuk, okay, that's in the Old Testament. He's one of the minor prophets. Hosea, Jonah, uh, Hosea, Amos, um, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. And, and God is so good. God is so good. You know, David Carter, sometimes you think you're the only one God has left. Sometimes you're out there all by yourself. Ryan, you think you're the only one God has left, and everybody else is going crazy, going off the deep end, and they're looking at you cockeyed because you're worshiping the Lord, but you keep on praising God. Keep on trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. God sees you. Florence Gaffney, God sees you. He sees you all in Coachville. Praise Amen. God. He sees you. He knows what your needs are. You keep on trusting in the Lord. Praise God. Habakkuk ministered to Israel, actually Judah, the nation of Judah, which was the southern kingdom of, kingdom of Israel, during the death throes, during the time of the death of Israel. Okay? Habakkuk was there when Nebuchadnezzar came through and uh, destroyed Israel. Habakkuk is a contemporary of Jeremiah. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be preaching from Habakkuk and Jeremiah. And, and these prophets cried. They cried. They wept bitter tears. They cried because of the destruction of their nation. They cried because they uh, uh, saw people turn their backs on God and to do all kind of evil. And it, as Good. things grew more evil, the people still denied God. And that will break a prophet's heart, ladies and gentlemen. That will break a pastor's heart. That will break a believer's heart. To see people being bombarded by sin, sickness, and death and still deny God. Habakkuk lived at a time where people were so hard-hearted. David Carter, they, was, they were so hard-headed. Their hearts were adamant, 
against God. Uh, their hearts were like flint stone against God, like granite. Uh, they didn't want God around. They kicked God out of their lives, out of their government, and they tried to live their own lives the way they wanted to. They had no need for God, and they kept going downhill. And here is the man of God, Habakkuk, and next week you'll see Jeremiah. They're crying unto the Lord for mercy. And, 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 and sometimes it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, when you're crying unto the Lord, and, and my friends in Kenya, you know this. My friends in uh, Jamaica, you know this. My friends in Europe, you know this. My friends in Sweden, you know this. When you're crying unto the Lord for the people, and the people don't want anything to do with God. It seems futile. It seems frustrating. But somebody has to cry unto the Lord. Somebody has to stand in the gap for the nation. So we see Habakkuk ministering during the times of the death of the nation of Judah. It won't be long after Habakkuk cries unto the Lord that God sends Nebuchadnezzar to destroy the nation kill and slaughter a lot of people, ruthlessly kill a lot of people, take many into captivity, and to wipe out that nation. And Israel is led into captivity, no longer that great kingdom of David, no longer a sovereign nation, but they're scattered throughout the world, and most of them have been put to death. Ladies and gentlemen, the burden of of Habakkuk. That's my subject today, the burden of Habakkuk. Habakkuk had a burden. And 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 and, and you as, as we as we look at Habakkuk next, next week as we look at Jeremiah, you see that they both share the same burden. Lord, why do the wicked flourish and the, and and the righteous? Why are they destroyed? Why do the wicked get over? Why does wickedness pre prevail in a land and, 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 and righteousness looks like it's a joke? And so this was Habakkuk's burden. Um, and God spoke to Habakkuk. And when God spoke to Habakkuk, what God said to Habakkuk drove the prophet to his knees. His legs wilted. He fell on his knees when God spoke to him and God showed him what was going to take place. But yet Habakkuk said, though the fig tree doesn't blossom, though there be no nothing growing in the garden, though there be no more cattle in the stalls, no more sheep, the Lord is in this holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. So here's a, a man of God. He's got a burden, and, and God will put a burden on you. And, 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 and he will have you praying for people outside of your household and outside of your local community, outside of your church, outside of, of, uh, of the church walls. He'll have you standing in the gap for the government, even with a government that is dishonest and lying and deceptive and bent on telling lies. The Lord will have somebody stand in the gap so that God does not destroy the government and God does not destroy the nation and get God that God would not destroy you. And so this was Habakkuk. And he said, he wrote in, in, in his, short, his short prophecy, it's not a long prophecy, just three chapters. We're not going to cover all, just portions of one and two. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Now, that's a prophet, ladies and gentlemen. That's a prophet. Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Lord, why is there so much violence going on in our nation? Tearing down statues. Tearing down statues is not the answer. Changing the national anthem is not the answer. The root of the problem is sin. Oh, God, why is there so much uh, police brutality? Black Lives Matter is crying out. But then at the same time that Black Lives Matter is crying out, ladies and gentlemen, you've got more blacks killing blacks than you have policemen killing blacks. 
The, so the answer is not the white cops. The yeah. answer is not to destroy the white cops. Uh, the answer, hey, it, it has to start at home, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all lives matter. Black lives matter to God. White lives matter to God. Brown lives matter to God. All lives matter to God. So let's not politicize this thing and let's not racialize this thing, ladies and gentlemen. We know we live in a racist nation. We know that the root of, of this whole thing is sin. But, but, but then uh, we cannot hate on people because of the racist history in this nation. No. no. Anytime a Christian begins to hate, you have lost your Christianity. Anytime you begin to hate, you lose your anointing. Anytime you begin to hate, you cross over to the dark side. God is not a God of hate. He's a God of love. And Habakkuk, just like Jeremiah, who had every reason on earth to hate, these two prophets chose to be righteous and holy and humble. And so my word to, to all of you, uh, black, white, brown, uh, rainbow colored people, uh, stop hating and start worshiping Lord, the Lord. And when you worship the Lord and when you praise the Lord and we pray and seek the face of God, uh, there's no room for hatred. If, if you're worshiping God and you still have hatred in your heart for, for somebody, the Bible says in 1 John 4, you are a liar. You call me a liar, Pastor Carter? No, I'm not calling you a liar. God's calling you a liar. The Bible says if you say you love God whom you have not seen and hate your neighbor whom you have seen, you're a liar. So I'm not calling you a liar. God is calling you a liar in 1 John chapter 4. And the only way to stop being a liar is to repent and to love one another. Repent. And to love one another. You can destroy all the Confederate flags. You can tear down all the, all the monuments. Uh, but that is not going to destroy this racism. Racism is embedded in the hearts of people. People are born racist. They are born. It's in their blood. Just like uh, 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 blacks who kill blacks. They are born sinners. It's in their blood. And you must be born again. The Bible says you must be born again. Whether you're white, black, green, yellow, purple, or pink, you must be born again. That message will not change. And so you get people like Jeremiah who will cry out that message. And so what, what did they do? They tried to kill Jeremiah. They tried to destroy Habakkuk. They took Isaiah, the prophet. They stuffed him in a hollowed out tree trunk and cut the tree trunk in half and cut the prophet in half. People are vicious. They don't want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear from God. Ladies and gentlemen, governments are cruel. They don't want God in on what they're doing. And so they would do all they can to destroy the presence of God. And, 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 but God will always raise up somebody, ladies and gentlemen. He will raise up somebody who will stand in the gap for righteousness and for holiness. It might cost that person his or her life, but God will defend that person. And, and God will, uh, 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 so uh, if, you, if you die on the battlefield uh, for Jesus, you'll be resurrected, uh, raised again from the dead. Uh, we shall live again. We shall live again, the Bible says. And praise God. So God is not a man that he should lie. He's faithful. He'll keep his promises. So Habakkuk says, why? Why so much violence? Verse 3. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. Rioting, looting, and plundering are before me. Bombing police stations, burning down Wendy's. I see all this. Why all this spoiling and violence? And there are those that raise up strife and contention. Why the anarchists hiding behind the Black Lives Matter movement? Therefore, the law is slacked. The law can't handle it. And judgment doth ne never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. 
and so the government can't handle it, and so they they it, it issue wrong judgment, wrong judgment, and 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 even in the government, so much corruption, lying, and deception. You can't believe anything coming out of the government these days, and so what Habakkuk cries out about. Uh, 600 years before Christ. We still see it today, ladies and gentlemen. It's still the same thing. Mm. And somebody's got to cry unto the Lord for righteousness. And they're going to hate you if you cry out for righteousness. Mm. But someone must cry unto the Lord because our God is the God of righteousness and holiness. And he said, and I saw for a man among them who will stand in the gap before me for the nation and make up the hedge that I will not destroy the nation. God said, and I found none. Mm. And God said, my eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth. I'm looking for somebody who will stand up for righteousness and holiness, somebody who will not compromise, someone who will not give in to evil, someone who will not be bought with the price of what this world has to offer. I'm looking for someone that I can prove myself strong on their behalf. And so God's looking in the churches. He's looking in your church. He's looking in this church. He's looking, and, 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 and he's looking for somebody who's going to be holy unto God, who will not be greedy for money, not be greedy for building up a great mega ministry, not be greedy for building up their own empire, not be greedy for, greedy for building up what's mine, God wants someone who's going to stand up for his word, for righteousness, so that men and women can be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know how serious it is in America today. This is serious stuff. Even the leaders say, look, look, the numbers of the coronavirus are going up. And we don't have any answer. We tried uh, social distancing. We tried masks. We tried shutdowns. Uh, we tried a uh, 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 gradual uh, uh, liberation, gradual opening of our states, and, and now it's worse than ever before. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, my heart has been so grieved, so heavy. I've got a heart like Habakkuk. Lord, who's going to stand up for righteousness? Where are the righteous leaders? Lord, show me somebody who will stand up for righteousness and, and tell the people that, that you must turn to the Lord. You must turn to the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the way it was with me when I got up this morning. I said, God, where are the righteous leaders? Where are the bold preachers who, is gonna, who are going to say, we're in this condition because of our sins? Lord, where are the mega preachers? They're not even saying anything. They're scared. They're scared to rock this political. They're scared to rock the political party, the Republican Party. They're scared to rock the boat. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, when you've got great, powerful, spiritual leaders who get bold on TV and boldly talk to people about this and that, but yet they're scared to, to, to call uh, uh, call out the unrighteousness in this nation. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And so this whole, this whole American Christianity thing, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you the way it is. This whole American Christianity thing, it stinks. Mm -hmm. It's putrid. It smells like garbage. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is so putrefied. American yeah. Christianity, uh, preachers, they're, they're easy, they easily get up and wave the flag and sing America the beautiful, oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. But yet they're afraid to speak ab about racism, mm. about sin, about corruption, about lying. And American Christianity is getting exactly what American Christi Christianity asked for. They put a liar in office, and now they're supporting that liar. Many are going yeah. to go down the same drain with him. They're going to go into the same swamp with him because, mm -hmm. because many Americans are afraid uh, to rock the boat. Uh, they're afraid. Many Americans are, are afraid to say, I, you know, I made a mistake. I repent. I put so-and-so above Jesus. 
and now, uh, and 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 this and this person is lying, and everything comes out of his mouth is a lie. Every tweet he makes is a lie, and 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 so many of our Christian leaders, many of our church leaders in America, are out there caught up in a lie, and too ashamed to say I made a mistake, and too proud to repent. And he said, "Well, you're judging, Pastor Carter. Am I? Am I?" I repent, I repent, I repent for not speaking up more than I should, have been doing. But God is righteous. He's holy, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot, we cannot be bed partners with sin. We cannot sleep with the enemy. We cannot sleep with whoremongers. We cannot sleep with adulterers. We cannot sleep with greedy liars. We cannot sleep with people who twist the truth. And that's what a lot of uh, the, the church leaders are doing today. Sleeping with the enemy. Oh, y'all are quiet out there. And and Habakkuk had to deal with the same thing. He cried out, where is righteousness? Jeremiah, where is righteousness? Yes, it will cost us our lives, but somebody's got to speak for God. Somebody's got to stand in the gap, David Carter. Somebody's got to stand in the gap. Amen. And I pray that David Carter and his wife and family would be able to uh, leave Dubai, come back to the States for a little rest, get re replenished, re resupplied, uh, refilled with the Holy Spirit, and then go back to Dubai and do what God has sent them to do. Praise God. And so, and so this was Habakkuk's burden. We'll talk about Jeremiah's burden next week. And, and they're, they're contemporaries. And then... Chapter 2, here's what Habakkuk said after he expressed himself. Express yourself. Habakkuk expressed himself. I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Habakkuk laid his case before the Lord. He said, now I'm going to stand on my watchtower. I'm going to stand on guard. I'm going to watch and see what God will say to me when I'm reproved. Because I know he's going to reprove me. I know he's going to correct me. And I know he's got a word of reproval for me. But I'm, I'm standing out here, God, because I don't see the righteousness. And, 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 I, and, and, and I don't see people turning to you. And it hurts me. It hurts my heart, God, Amen. to see the people you've been so good to turn their backs to you. And, you know, silence, to remain silent, is, is just, just as much guilty as those who are doing the guilty stuff. And the church is silent. The leaders are silent. Those mega pastors are silent. Many of the preachers I know, they're silent. Most preachers I know are just trying to figure out what can I do to get my church back together? What can I do to get back in front of the people? What can I do to get back in the pulpit? How can I get online? How can I get that money coming so we can pay our bills and, and have no real desire, no more heart for Jesus than a snake has? Mm. And so it's a burden, ladies. It's called a burden. And then, and then you can carry that burden, Ryan, and you think you're all by yourself. Lord, I'm the only one you got left. I'm riding up down this highway with my truck, and, and none of these other truckers seem to love you and, and look like I'm the only one left. And you can isolate yourself, ladies and gentlemen, and you can get into this isolationist mentality like Elijah and say, Lord, I'm hiding in the cave. I ain't preaching no more. Because mm -hmm. I'm the only one you got left. And, and next week we see Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, oh, uh, 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 I'm not preaching anymore, God. I'm not preaching. Just evil has taken over. I've been preaching. I've been crying unto you and, 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 and praying and seeking your face. And there's nothing changing. It's getting worse and worse. So I ain't going to preach no more. I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> That's what Jeremiah said. I'm going to shut up. Mercy. Until God touched him one day, and, and Jeremiah said it was like fire. 
Shut up in my bones, he said. I got to preach. I got to call Amen. upon no matter how wicked things are. I've got to call on the name of the Lord. I'm going to knock on your door one more time, God, because I believe this time you're going to have mercy. I'm going to see your mercy. You're going to give me a sign. Amen. And so, David Carter, when I woke up this morning, that was my mentality. God, God, this burden, this burden for this nation, this burden for all these people dying and sick, and, and many will not turn to you. And, Lord, and, and the main thing I was crying out, David Carter, was, God, is there a leader who will stand up before the people and say, we have sinned against you? And the only way to get out of this dilemma is to humble ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord. That was my cry. Lord, raise up somebody who will go before this nation and say, we have sinned against God. We're in this situation because of our sins. God, forgive us. Have mercy on us. Amen. And lo and behold, David Carter, I turn on TBN Network as I was getting dressed. And Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence, was preaching at First Baptist Church in Dallas. Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence was preaching. And he had his mask on. He was preaching. And he was giving his testimony. He said, when I was a seminary student back in 1978, I said, whoa. Mike Pence and I were in seminary at the same time, 1978. And he said, I gave my heart to the Lord and I committed my life to Jesus Christ. And then Mike Pence said to the nation, and he took the passage of Scripture I'm going to use next week, and that passage was in my heart, Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, God said, I know the plans I have for you to prosper you and give you good health. And Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States, he was preaching today, y'all, and he said, Amen. we need to repent. The only way we can get out of this situation we're in is to repent, humble ourselves, Amen. and call upon the name of the Lord because it is our sins that have caused this situation. Uh. And I said, Lord, I repent. Lord, you sent me the sign. I was, Lord, I was looking for a sign, looking for a sign. Is there a leader who will go before this nation and say we need to humble ourselves? You got preachers like me on the perimeter. Hardly anybody wants to hear us. But, Lord, can you raise up somebody and go be send them before the nation and tell the nation that we must repent, that it's because of our iniquities we're in this situation. And God sent Mike Pence, ladies and gentlemen. And the president was not standing over his shoulder telling him what to say or censoring what he was saying. He was speaking from his heart. And I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's hope for this nation. There's hope for the nations. God has heard our prayers. God's going to turn this situation around, ladies and gentlemen. And just like he, he told Nebuchadnezzar, he told Habakkuk, Nebuchadnezzar's coming. He's going to carry you all into captivity. But I will return people from the captivity. I'm going to punish sin because I cannot stand sin. God gave Habakkuk the answer. It was not the answer Habakkuk was looking for, but Habakkuk said, Though the fig tree blossom not, though there be no flowers in the garden, no veggies growing in the garden, to paraphrase him, he said, Though there be no cattle in the stalls, yet the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And Habakkuk worshiped the Lord because he said, God, this is your world. You are in charge. I worship you. And that's my position, ladies and gentlemen. 
when, when I saw Mike Pence preaching today, the vice president, and he gave his testimony, and he told the American people what must be done, I said, hallelujah, God, that's an answer to my prayer. That's a sign. And so I will trust you, Lord God, to do whatever you want to do. You're in charge. Hallelujah. You are in charge. Hallelujah. God raised up someone to speak to the people. Now, whether or not the people hear and hearken to God's voice, that's on the people. But God answered my prayers. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We love you. And Lord God, many of your people out there today have burdens on their heart, waiting for the answer. Let them not give up. Let them not quit. Let us all be like Habakkuk. Let us stand on our guard post. Let us stand on the post that you have assigned us to. Let us stay awoke. Let us call on you. And let us watch and see what you will do because you are holy and you are righteous. And so I, so I say cling to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is the answer. And if you're listening today and you're not saved, get saved. What must I do to be saved? The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Then get your household saved. Get your friends saved. And keep on trusting in the Lord. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We're going to end our, our recording and ask that. And if you have any questions or comments, please give me a call. Uh, send me an email or a text. And I'll be glad to talk with you.